Hi everyone, my name is Beth. I'm a librarian at the Weinberg Library in Mequon. Today I'd like to talk to you about Hoopla. Hoopla is a database that's similar to Overdrive, if you're familiar with that one. Using Hoopla and your library card, you can check out ebooks, audiobooks, movies, music, and TV shows, all for free. You're limited to checking out five titles per month, so once you hit that limit, you'll have to wait until the first day of the next month to check out more. And Hoopla also has a slightly more limited selection than Overdrive does. But the nice thing about it is that everything is on demand. So if you see something in the Hoopla database, you don't have to wait for it to come back in because someone has it checked out. There's no wait lists whatsoever. If you see it, you can check it out and keep it for three days for things like movies and music and up to 21 days for things like eBooks. So like I said, Hoopla is free to you with your library card. And the first time you download the app from the App Store or the Play Store, you'll be prompted to sign in. If you've never used Hoopla before, you'll need to sign up first to make an account. Once you say sign up, you'll be prompted to put in your email address and create a password. Once you hit next, then you'll be asked for which library you're signing up from. You'll be asked for your library card number and your PIN, which is always the last four numbers of your phone number, and then your account will be created. Now the app should sign you in automatically and remember you going forward, but if you're ever signed out of the app or you get a new phone and you need to sign in again, you'll sign in using the email address and the password that you created here. Now I already have a Hoopla email address and a password, so I'm going to sign in. Signing in takes me to the home section of the app. So just like with OverDrive, you can either search for specific things in Hoopla or you can browse for things that you might want to see. To search, you'll tap search near the bottom of the screen, and then you'll tap into this search bar up at the top of the screen, and you can type in a title, an artist, a series, an author, um, really any information you have about a particular book or series to see more about it. So I'm going to look for James Patterson. So I'm going to type in Patterson, comma, and you'll notice as I'm typing, a menu drops down here with suggestions for what I might be looking for. I don't see what I'm looking for here, which makes me think maybe James Patterson isn't hugely featured in Hoopla, but that's okay. I'm going to finish typing Patterson, comma, James, and then I'll tap the magnifying glass in the bottom right corner to complete the search. So I did get some results, but at a glance, I'm not seeing anything by the author that I wanted. And this is a good example of one of the limitations of Hoopla. I mentioned before they have a smaller selection than Overdrive. They don't have as many big name titles or big name authors necessarily, but again, what's here is here on demand. So if I decided I wanted to listen to the music of DeAndre Patterson or read a book about Floyd Patterson, I could just do that right here. If I wanted to browse just to see what is available in Hoopla, I could tap on the home tab near the bottom of the screen to get back to that place we started before. And I have different format options near the top of the screen here. Audiobooks, comics, ebooks. If I tap and hold down on these, I can pull them to the left and see more. So there's also movies, music, and television. I can tap on any of these buttons to choose this format, and then I'll be prompted to choose between genres or popular items or other different categories. So I'm going to choose ebooks. And now you'll see I have a, a collection of popular items featured items that Hoopla has put together for me, recommended items based on what I've read before, and of course a button for genres and collections. If you wanted to see more in the popular items or the featured items, you could also tap more beside them and see the whole list. Let's go ahead and tap on genres. So right away it opens to collections, and these are things that Hoopla has selected and put together based on different topics and categories. So for example, you have book club recommendations, celebrity book club picks like the Reese Witherspoon book club or the Oprah book club. Um, I can also tap on genres to switch to an alphabetical selection of genres. Um, art, architecture, comics and graphic novels, all sorts of things. If you know what genre you're looking for and you don't want to scroll through this list, you can tap into search for collections and genres and type it in. So for example, if I knew I wanted to see mysteries, I could type mystery into this box and just see what books are categorized as mysteries. 
And in fact, I am going to do that. I'm going to tap into the search box and type in mystery and then tap the magnifying glass to complete the search. So now I'm given a list of collections and genres that include the category of mystery. Um, I can see here, first I have fiction and science fiction mysteries, not necessarily what I'm looking for, comics and graphic novels, um, fiction, mystery, and detective. So I do have to go down a little bit to get to the sort of blanket mystery and detective section. Um, so when you're looking for a genre, always read carefully to make sure you're, you're choosing what you actually want to see. Um, but I do see fiction and then mystery and detective here, and it looks pretty general, so I'm going to tap on it. And then I'm going to say see all mystery and detective titles. And now I have a full list of all of the mystery and detective titles in Hoopla. If I want to narrow this list down, I have a couple of options. I can say filter near the top of the screen, and I can filter by the rating that other users have placed on it. I can filter by the release date or the date added. I can also filter by the language because Hoopla does include items um, in languages other than English, including Spanish and Arabic and a couple of other languages. From here, I can also tap on sort. And by default, Hoopla sorts based on its own sort of algorithm and what it thinks you might like, but you can also tell it to sort by popularity. Um, you can sort by the author's last name from A to Z or Z to A, again by user rating, or by the date added or the release date. Just to see, I'm going to go ahead and toggle to popularity, and then I can tap anywhere in the top of the screen to get out of this menu. So Hoopla really is a good option for when you're kind of sitting at the DMV or maybe in the airport, and you're saying, oh no, I forgot to grab a book. I just need something to read right now. And you can jump in here and see what's available and just take it out and see if you like it. If I see something that I want to go ahead and check out or look, learn more about, I can tap on the cover. So let's tap on The Mystery of Mrs. Christie, for example. Um, and I can see it's a novel. I can see when it was published and about how long it is. If I scroll down, I can see how long I can check it out. And again, um, ebooks are 21 days, but other types of items, other formats are going to be shorter than that. You're never going to be charged a fine. So if something comes due in Hoopla, it just disappears from your account. Um, so just keep an eye on when it's due back so you know how long you have with it. You don't have to worry about it charging you any money, though. There's a summary down here, and I can tap See More to see a whole synopsis of the book. I can see the genres and then I can see the author down at the bottom and some reviews from various sources. If I decided I wanted to go ahead and check this out, I would come back to the top of the screen and tap on borrow. And it is letting me know this title is available for 21 days. Are you sure? And I am, so I'm going to say borrow title. And it is downloaded. So as long as you're connected to Wi-Fi when you check out a book or some other item, Hoopla will automatically download it to your phone and then you can watch it, listen to it, or read it without an internet connection. When you return the item or when the item returns itself at the end of your borrowing period, it will be deleted from your device automatically. So don't worry about it taking up too much space. But it's a nice feature because then if you're traveling, you don't have access to internet, you can still read or watch or listen to things without having to worry about um, finding an internet connection somewhere. So now that I have the book borrowed and it's downloaded, I could just tap on read and that would take me in to actually read the book. From the home tab, from the very beginning of where we started in the app, if I wanted to read or listen to or watch something that I had checked out, it should be listed in this recently borrowed section, so I could go ahead and tap on the cover here, or I can tap on my Hoopla near the bottom of the screen, and I'll see a full list of what I have borrowed as well as what has been recently returned. So to go ahead and read The Mystery of Mrs. Christie, I could tap on the cover, and I'd be taken in to start reading the book. It also reminds me exactly how long I have it for, and it lets me know up at the top here how many more titles I have to borrow. I can also see some recently returned items near the bottom. So if you ever come into Hoopla and something has disappeared, it's, it's returned itself. If you go into My Hoopla, you'll see a full list of what you've checked out recently. And then you'll be able to go ahead and just check it back out again. Because there's never a wait list. No one took it from you. It just dropped off your account because the time ran out.
And that is it. That is the whole spiel with Hoopla. As always, there is a handout linked in the description of this video, so please feel free to take a look at it. My contact information is in that handout, so if you have more questions, please feel free to get in touch. If you're looking for in-person technology help, we have started up our Wednesday 101 series again. That's the third Wednesday of every month in the Tolzman Community Room between 2 and 4 p.m. You can stop in and sit down with me or another librarian and we'll give you up to 15 minutes of tech help. Whether that's troubleshooting something or getting clarification or asking questions about a, a computer or a device or a tablet, whatever you've got, uh, we'll do our best to give you a hand. Otherwise, I will see you back here on YouTube on August 20th at 3 o'clock. We will be talking about Novelist. See you then.